Hello everyone, welcome back to the Winter Wonder Sampler Sew Along. I hope you enjoyed making the tree blocks from last week and hope you enjoyed that technique. I think it's such a great one to learn, to be able to align those angles and learn that valley technique. And once you know that technique, now there's lots of other fun things you can do. I wanted to show you just a couple quick little things. So like this little tree runner, that's using the similar angles, even though we didn't use a piece that was shaped like this. Uh, still, you have the skills now that you would be able to make that little runner. That's from my Angles with Ease book. It uses the same template that we did last week. Or how about these little watermelon blocks? This is a strip piece unit, and it's that same angle that we learned last week. So you can see kind of the outline of a tree here. And now you would be able to make and sew those little watermelon pieces. So this is a table runner from my Trendy Table 3 book. And then if you wanted to take it one step further, this table runner is also done using that same angle. Now this looks very complicated. And when I started quilting 25 years ago, it would have been complicated because we would have used a little template for each one of these pieces. But what I have you do in this pattern is you make a strip unit like this, and then you use that same angle from last week. So there's your little tree shape. And this one uses that same uh, template again, the triangular. And you're gonna lay the ruler down on your strip unit and you're gonna cut around the ruler and that's how you get these shapes. And then you can, oh, let's see if I can do this by myself. You can see right where that template fits in on the block. So here's your little tree unit and you're gonna sew two of them together and that makes a quarter of the block and you just make four of those and sew the quarters together. So much, much easier than it looks. So I hope you are now open to the possibility of using those angles a little bit more now that you know how to do it. But for this week, we are gonna go to triangle free. We are just going to make the scarf unit for our sampler block. So um, it's not hard to do. It just requires a little bit of accuracy because of some of the small pieces, but it's gonna be an easy week. You only have to make two of those. And then next week is our last week, everyone. So. Um, hopefully you've been keeping up and you have all the sections for your quilt done. And then next week, we're going to learn how to sew those together. We're going to talk about how to cut the borders and a few finishing techniques. So uh, stay tuned for the videos that will follow. And I will walk you through the steps on making the scarf. And um, I hope you're enjoying doing all these fun winter blocks. And um, that this has been a good way for you to set goals and get this quilt completed in time for winter. All right, we are all set up and ready to go and ready to start making our scarf blocks for the Winter Wonder Sew Along. As you can see, I've got all my pieces cut over here and I'm ready to start sewing. So we're going to work on step 23 and we're going to be making some strip units. Now this strip unit has quite a few pieces in it and it also has some small pieces. So the red uh, scarf piece here is cut one and a quarter inch and this is cut one inch. So accuracy is really important when you're doing this. So I'm gonna share some tips on that here shortly when I start sewing. And I also wanted to talk about the rainbow effect that happens sometimes when people are sewing strip units. So for example, on this, if you'd start with the top strip and you would keep working your way down, adding one more strip all the way till you get to the fourth red strip, which I actually have on my machine here, but you can imagine this is the same fabric. If you start from the top and work your way down, and for example, if on each strip, it, you work in a little bit more, you're gonna end up with kind of a ruffled, curved effect to your strip unit here, rather than a straight piece. So there are several things that you can do to help avoid that. And the method I'm gonna use is I'm gonna sew my strip together in pairs. So we're gonna sew these two, then these two, then these two, and then we'll go and connect those pairs. And that keeps you from starting at one end and adding a little more each time. Um, just by doing that pairing method, you know, and working those in together evenly, you're gonna cut down on that quite a bit. Now, if you were doing, say, a smaller strip unit like this, you could still do in pairs, or let's just say you had five strips, you could also avoid that by starting with the middle strip and adding to either side and working your way out from the middle. That way, again, you don't start at the top and work your way to the bottom and at each strip get a little bit bigger. So I think that helps. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and sew my pairs together like this. I have one started on my machine here. And um, let's talk a little bit about the accuracy like I mentioned. So, I mean, first of all, you have to have a quarter inch foot on your machine, which I do have that. And you're gonna wanna make sure that the edge of your strip is always nicely lined up with that edge. Cause you really, on a one inch piece here that finishes at a half inch, you really can't afford to lose any or have any extra cause the whole thing will be thrown off, especially if you do it on each of those seven strips. Uh, you can also use a quarter inch foot that has a seam guide. It's like a black metal flange that goes on the side. If you don't have that, you can kind of make your own by taking a post-it tablet like I have here and you can line it up on your machine like so and stick it down and just make sure that it's, you know, accurate, that it's in the right location, that it's not, you know, over. It has to be exactly next to your foot. And then you can just take the edge of your fabric and ride it up against that ridge of how many layers of fab or layers of paper that we have here. And that may also help you guide and stay accurate. Um, another suggestion is if you are really worried about being precise, you're gonna wanna use a little bit lighter weight thread. So don't use a heavy thread. You can see here, I have a really thin, thin thread. I think this is called So Fine. No, I'm not seeing, no, it's not. I'm not seeing the name here, but um, something that is a lighter weight thread is gonna help you not lose so much in the seam allowance with your stitching. Um, another thing I do when I'm cutting, and that's why I have my Omni grid ruler here. So when you look close, do you see how like this big line right here has a skinny black line in the middle and yellow on either side? So rather than cut with my edge of my fabric directly lined up with the black, I line it up with the outside edge of the yellow. And that gives you just maybe a thread, maybe two of extra fabric, and that allows for the turn of the fabric when you sew. So for years and years, I've always cut that way, just allowing a little bit extra. And that's how I was taught, and I feel like I don't lose or have so much shrinkage in my blocks because of that. And then the last thing is to pay attention to pressing. So on my little sample block here, do you see how there is a little extra hidden right in there. Do you see that? I mean, it looks fine when you just look at it like this, but if you really go up to it and peer closely, you can see there's extra hidden in that seam. So you're gonna to wanna to use the edge of the iron to make sure that it's pulled all the way out so you can almost see the little dots of your stitching. Then you know there isn't anything being hidden in that seam. So you wanna make sure it's nice and flat. Now, in this case, with this strip unit, if you look at the pattern, I have a little arrow that is going both ways there, and that means I press that seam open. So that's the last thing. Um, pressing seams open is gonna help them lay flatter, and you're gonna be a little bit more accurate. Again, you don't learn, lose quite as much in, in the turn of the fabric, so to speak. So by the turn of the fabric, I mean when this gets folded over, Sometimes you lose something in the space that it takes to turn the fabric and go from one direction flipping over to the other. So those are a few tips to help you stay accurate. I'm gonna go ahead and start sewing and I'll be back here to talk about cutting up those strip units. I have my little strip set all sewn together and you can see there are my seams pressed open so it lays nice and flat. Now this should be five inches tall because we're going to be sewing it next to these pieces that we have cut here. And if you're wondering, you know, if yours is, is off from five inches and you're wondering where that's happening, you can take your ruler and lay it on top. Each of these white strips should be a half inch wide and the red strip should be three quarter. So that'll give you kind of an idea of where you might have gotten off if you are. Um, and you could make some adjustments from there if needed. If it all looks good and it is five inches wide, then you can go ahead and make four inch cuts along there so that your sections are ready to be sewn. So I have, I feel like a slight little bit of a curve here. So I'm gonna go ahead and re-square and just take a few threads off that side. Now this is a rotating mat and I should have rotated it to show you that rather than a backwards cut, but it's only one. So there we have our four inch section. 
to become our fringe on the end of our scarves. I've already cut my other red one here. So we can go on to the next step, which is making some more strip units. In this case, you're gonna have a longer piece, one and a half inches wide, with a background piece in between, and another piece on this side. So I'm gonna go ahead and sew those together. And you also are gonna have a shorter unit that is the reverse of that. Let me grab those pieces and lay them out. So you're gonna have one long unit like this, one shorter unit like this. Now follow the pressing arrows in the pattern. When you get to pressing, I'm gonna have you press toward the red on both of them. And then I'll come back and we will cut those pieces into sections and I will show you how I nest and sew those together. All right, I've got my strip units made for step 24. I've got the one with the red on the two sides and the red in the middle. And I'm gonna cut them into sections, but just to make that process go faster, you can see I've layered two of them together. And because the seams are all pressed toward the red, those seams are kind of offset or nested. So I don't have to worry about my ruler teetering over to them too much. And then what you're gonna do is square off the left side and then we're gonna cut it into one and a half inch sections. Just work your way across the strip. You're gonna cut five to start out with. That's how many you can get out of this top strip that's um, half the length of the other one. I have a little scrap at the end. That'll allow you to square up if you need to. And then you can just go to the machine with these already paired and ready to sew. And then let's slide this over and finish cutting this. Now, if you need to, you can re-square up this end. And I do need to, this is a rotating mat. So as long as you have all your stuff out of the way, you can turn and rotate and make that cut without moving or without having to do the backwards cut that I showed you earlier or did earlier. Then you're just gonna work your way across the strip cutting it into one and a half sec inch sections. And again, if at any point it starts getting off and you need to re-square that end to keep it straight, go ahead and do that. Otherwise, just keep cutting. We've got two more quick cuts here. And again, you'll have a little scrap there. Then let's go over to the machine and start sewing. Let's just slide this over a little bit. And I just wanna talk a little bit about the nesting part. I haven't shared my technique for that yet. And let's see if we can get the camera in a little bit better position here. You can see a little better. So I've got my two stacks ready to sew. So um, you can see here when I show you the end, here's the nesting that I'm talking about. This red seam is going that way, this red seam is going that way. So those seams will lock together nicely when you sew. So I don't do any pinning when I have seams like this. I feel like pins just kind of slow me down and sometimes even just get in the way. So if you can do it without pinning, it will save you a little time and hopefully you'll get a nice crisp intersection. So. What I do is I start sewing, get that aligned, then I'm gonna put one finger underneath to kind of act like a pin and one finger on top. And then I'm gonna feel for the nested seam. So I can feel that they're right up tight next to each other. If they're not, you can use your finger on the bottom to pull or tug just slightly until you feel that nest and lock in place. And then I'm gonna hold those two fingers in that position as I sew toward that intersection. I'm gonna do the same thing on the next one using the bottom finger to kind of Put some tension on it and the top finger to hold it in place and then i'm going to chain piece right on to the next one i find it's easiest to nest with this seam going up you know you can flip it over and you see that seam is going down so sometimes then the machine will work that seam away from being nested there you can see that little gap there but if you sew with this seam facing up your, the presser foot on your machine is gonna push the bulk of that seam into the seam underneath and lock it in place. So if you have the choice of being able to choose between one being nested or not, you can. 
Now what happens, or with it being facing up, you can. Now on the bottom, it automatically is gonna be the opposite direction and that's just gonna happen. So you have to learn how to mess both ways. And after you're done sewing, let's do a little test here and see. And there you can see my seams are nicely lined up there. So you can go ahead and sew all the way through and make all of those. Then you're gonna go and add another one on this side here. And that will create our little nine patch. So I'm gonna go ahead and sew that one. You can watch me nest again. Where I get those fingers in position and kind of use them as pins. And I'm just going to sew onto a little scrap of fabric here, a little bunny tail as I call it so that I can free that little nine patch. So there are my little nested corners. You can go ahead and press that. Um, I press the seams out and then you're going to have some little sections here, little strips that you can sew on either side of your nine patch. You can go ahead and make your nine patches and sew that, let's see if I can get that in the camera, and sew that, those two pieces on either side. And we'll come back and assemble our entire scarf unit and we'll be done. All right, I've got my little sections all made and we are ready to sew them together to create the scarf. So you can see I have my pieces laid out in order of how they're gonna be sewn together. And I have a section here that's already sewn together. So you're gonna go ahead and sew all of those pieces together until you get a unit like what I have here. Now it's supposed to measure 42 inches long. I saw that mine was just a fuzz over. So you can see down over here about an eighth of an inch. So I'm gonna trim equally a little bit off of each end to get it to the 42 inches. Then we have these cream strips that are cut to 42 inches that will fit. Now if yours ends up being a little bit too small, like smaller than the 42 inches, you can go ahead and cut this cream a little smaller to fit. But then when you add your end caps on the end, let's just slide that in, you'll want to cut this a little bit bigger to make up for it. So for example, if your scarf unit turns out a quarter of an inch too small, then you're going to cut this an eighth of an inch wider. And you're going to cut this one over here an eighth of an inch longer. And then you're going to go ahead and join all those units together. And then we have all of our pieces made for our sampler. So next week we'll come back and we will sew those sections together. We'll talk about the borders and we'll talk about some finishing. So we're almost there. Uh, we'll see you back here again next week.